But in a situation where you find that they must look like the same. Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional. All right, thanks for staying. Time now to take a look at the dailies on Daybreak. Uh, we have in the studio Ben Sherman, the director of News Voice of Nigeria, in the studio to give us perspectives on the stories. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. So let's begin with the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. The lead story says, Strike, FG registered another, registers another union to checkmate ASU. Uh, it's, uh, the writer says, Konoa has no members, exists only in OAU, lecturers mock government. So Konoa is the acronym for the new uh, union that uh, has been registered by government. The next writer there says, unions complicit of corruption in ivory towers, says Buhari. We saw that video earlier uh, here on the program. Corruption will soon kill education sector, Jega warns. You would also find pictorial there where the president uh, is uh, conferring integrity award on SP Ama, who, a police officer who we understand rejected $200,000 bribe. That's a huge amount. And I, th and I think that this is an award well deserved. It's something to set as an example uh, for many others. Now, you have other stories uh, at a footnote. Again, nine die of food poisoning in Kogi. Buhari to present 19.76 trillion Naira 2023 budget to National Assembly. INEC publishes, publishes list of governorship candidates. You also have other stories above the lead story. Petrol queues resurface in Abuja as marketers fault logistics. That's on page 24. PDP crisis. BOT to convene emergency meeting over Wiki's position. That's on page 31. NNPC net profits leaps to 674 billion naira, sells 11 trillion naira oil in six months. Not forgetting that this is 475 days uh, we still have 11 schoolgirls of FGC Berini Yawori in the custody of their abductors. Also, one student of Bethel Baptist High School, Kojama, 448 days after, still in captivity. So we pray for their release soon as possible. These are the stories on the front page of the Daily Trust. All right, now let's take a look at the leadership newspaper. It has a lead story that says, 142 days to 2023 polls. Presidential candidates still struggling with intra-party issues. The first writer says, PDP BOT fails to end article wiki feud. NWC absolves self of wrongdoing over housing loot. APC governors meet to address gray areas in campaign council list. We're still working on campaign list, says SDP, LP, and NNPP. Will be cries out over attacks, arrest of supporters. Still on the leadership, we'll have another nine family members die of suspected food poisoning in Kogi. Authentic national honors list out soon. This is coming from the federal government. Also, update on the floods. Olam Rice Farm rescues 3,805 victims in Nasara communities. And just above the lead story on the leadership, PMB gets report on ASU strike, says education sector stinks of corruption. And above that, revenue loss, federal government sues Zuckerberg's meta, six 30 billion naira as compensation. And then above the masthead, NMPC declares 674 billion naira as profit for 2021. Also, Senate gives NLNG two months to pay host communities 18.4 billion naira. This is uh, the major stories on the leadership for today. All right, so let's take a look at the Nation newspaper this morning. The lead story there says, PDP crisis, BOT's move to unite Atiku. Uh, you have also uh, Wiki collapses. 
Then the other, other stories above the masthead says World Bank predicts 1% reduction in Nigeria's growth. Nigeria owes NNPCL 1.3 trillion naira, Kerry alleges. Police commission okays dismissal of seven officers. Pay rise coming for Lagos workers, says Samwolu. Then you have also federal government registers ASU's uh, breakaway faction, Konwa. All right, these are the stories on the front page of the nation. And on to the Disney newspaper. It has a lead story that says, this is coming from the Sibian governor, Emefili, rise in disruptive banking technology is disturbing. And just above that, uh, coming from uh, Aisha Buhari, my husband suffered from PTSD for many years. And above that, for second time in 45 years, NMPCL declares profit, raking 674 billion naira after tax revenues. And also, Buhari accuses ASU of corruption as federal government registers two new varsity-based unions. And we also have some other surprises, legal civil servants with salary increment. These are the major stories on this day newspaper. All right, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper. Lead story says, 10 billion naira nomination fee scandal. IU chairs stormy meeting, orders NWC members probe. You have the writers that says, national deputy chair, five other others may face a disciplinary panel over 122 million naira fraud refund and then pdp chair should also be investigated over controversial housing allowance neck members and the drama as bot rivers governor meeting ends in deadlock i use eight tackles candidates forum and then you also have other stories above the masthead fg sues meta over illegal arts demands 30 billion naira. NNPC grows profit to 674 billion naira. Assets hit 16 trillion naira. Three scientists win Nobel Prize for breakthrough in quantum physics. And then ASU knocks Ngige over factional groups registration. You will find also uh, other stories at the footnote, uh, NDA convocation. Oshibajo advocates local manufacture of arms and ammunition. Kanu mustn't die in detention. That's uh, Ezehome, writes Buhari. And then 150 persons killed during Ikoi prison attack, says witness. Hoodlums attack, uh, attack APC rally in Ibadan. Injure supporters. These are the major stories on the front page of uh, the punch this and morning. And finally for this morning, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper. It has a lead story that says, Strike, Federal Government Weakens ASU, Registers Rival Union. And the first writer says, Bajabi Amila presents ASU's recommendations to Buhari. Another meeting tomorrow for final outcome. And beneath that, Aine Claire's Delta's Obore Wori omits uh, Ogun PDP LP governorship candidates. Also, we have again PDP BOT meeting with Wiki ends in deadlock. And also on The Guardian, three killed, 20 trucks burnt as soldiers attack protesting Delta youth. Youth take over Rivers community, banish chiefs for allegedly taking bribe from Shell. Also, NMPC announces second profit of 674 billion naira as assets hit 6.27 trillion naira. These are the major stories on The Guardian for today. All right, so let's get perspectives on some of these stories uh, here this morning. Thank you again, Ben Shema, for joining us on The Daybreak Show. Uh, quite a number of stories, really, and uh, but I think the, the one that is uh, virtually in all the papers, we've seen this issue with ASU taking another dimension this time around. The federal government is registering another union, CONWA. And, uh, well, what, what, what do we understand? Why, why, why? What's the essence of this, really? Well, it is, um, there is a battle going on, and uh, government feels it wants to break 
the monopoly and the rank or ranks of uh, ASU. And that's why it's registered this um, academic, let's say the academics, uh, so to speak. And uh, you can see that uh, ASU is saying they are not bothered because they said it's that the new union is just uh, uh, a, I mean, AU based, it's, it's not n national yet. But you see, you don't underrate opposition. When Labo, Nigerian Labour Congress was that strong, suddenly we saw that TUC was uh, registered. Uh, so will, you will, can, will you say that TUC has actually whittled down the powers of the Labour Party? Do, um, I, uh, NLC do? Uh, uh, well, it's left for them to, to, to argue, but I want to tell you that when they were together, we fight together, you succeed together easily. A situation where you'll be going to the left and the other one is going to the right, or one chooses to, to be stagnant, um, does not augur well for unionism. So I, I think that um, ASU, when is, is calling the bluff, if I were them, I won't call the bluff yet because we don't know what the federal government is, 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 is doing. If a government, I mean, begins to get, um, mark you, two new register, uh, unions have been registered as against just ASU uh, alone when it comes to the academics. And so now that you have to, I mean, it, it, it says a lot. Uh, so we expect that um, ASU should go back to its drawing board. Is it uh, time for them to say, OK, let's swallow the, uh, the humble pie and begin to, I mean, make it a bit flexible? Um, also, government is saying by tomorrow, or Thursday or Friday, the president will meet again with the leadership of the House of Representatives, then ASU. Would there be some, um, I mean, uh, some face mending? Can uh, some people feel, OK, let's mellow down, because we've seen that the signals are, 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 are just not too OK. We also expect that um, people like Professor Jega should come in, because they have been former ASU uh, presidents. We expect former ASU president to come around. Even Adam Soshimole, who used to be with the NLC, are former leaders. I mean, these are stakeholders when it comes to unionism. Is unionism all about strike? Uh, when indeed we're talking of yeah, um, welfare of, of, of staff and the work environment. So it's holistic. But, so, but, but, but when you, when, I mean, when, when government can now control unions, what becomes of, uh, you know, unionism itself? What becomes of agitations for, you know, welfare, for, you know, concerns by members? Incidentally, uh, will I say government controls unions? Because you look at the, the labor laws. The labor laws allows government to register more, uh, any union and uh, even proscribe uh, some. So if the law is there and it has given that provision, of course, government can always see, oh, I can take, oh, I don't know, the law has given me some powers to tow this site, uh, you know. Uh, so I would not say a government is controlling the union. Rather, I will see that government is, is, is being uh, Explorate, uh, explorate. I mean, but if you look at the, the look at uh, if you look at the timing and the reasons for registering this group, Kodwa, and, and all that, would you uh, say that th that tendency is not there? Because government, yeah, I, I I think you see, government has also looked at it. Eight months. How many months left? A whole year. Everyone uh, educationally is down there. So if it feels that taking this kind of action. I'm not the spokesman for the government. If it feels that this is what they will take to ensure that uh, universities are back, why not? And when you look at um, the way yesterday they access um, uh, the education sector, the corruption that is uh, permeating up, down, down, up, and every area in terms of education. But Mr. Uh, Shaman, before we go into that, I just want you to talk about something. While the negotiations are still ongoing, the federal government took ASU to court. While the negotiations are still ongoing, the federal government uh, registered KONWA. Uh, some persons will say the federal government is not also showing an, enough good faith in all of this. You see, Congress of uh, University Academics uh, that has been uh, registered, uh, I think that government truly wants to break uh, the ranks. No, there's no two ways about it. 
And in the other mannerism where it hurriedly went to the industrial court and, and I said, look, um, uh, you just have to, to, to go back to, to, the, to the classrooms. You can see that it will now take a very long time from industrial court, you go to an appeal from this appeal to another higher court, up to Supreme Court, and you're talking of election period, we are some people who feel, look, election now is more important than uh, unionism matters, pending on uh, who is handling uh, what. So I think that um, for government to have gone to, to, to court, in, uh, so that the court, crying before the court, that uh, the university lecturer should be forced to the classroom, I think it, it, it was um, a wrong uh, technique as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Uh, but uh, if government again feels, okay, if that system, that one does not work because at the point they said, withdraw your cries before the industrial court. Uh, okay, now they, they are keeping it in abeyance and now registering this. They feel that it's a new tactic and um, I think time has come, therefore, that some people begin to mellow down. Parents, and everybody should, should look at that seriously. And uh, also, government seems to be, or I would say the president is shaking tables, going by his uh, speech yesterday at uh, this uh, uh, award confirmation ceremony that was, no, not the award, uh, the ICPC event that held at the State House in Abuja. Uh, where he conferred this award on S.B. Ama. Uh, he is, you know, uh, I would say, well, these are allegations, and also uh, at the same time he's, you know, indicting members of uh, the university community where he mentioned quite a lot. And we know that those things, they do happen, you know, but the timing and all of that, is this to blackmail? Well, if you juxtapose uh, that with what um, uh, Professor Jega said, uh, former university uh, vice chancellor, who indeed uh, also knows better, um, maybe than the president, because he is from the or he was from the academic community, the academia. Jega painted a serious uh, picture of corruption in the university and. Um, Buhari also did the same. And so if they are towing the same line, I mean, people were at the point, uh, sex for Marx, for example, and uh, of course, uh, in terms of academic transcripts to some universities, sometimes you, uh, they are being tinkered with. I mean, instead of this degree, you are given that. Uh, it, it's now faded to a certain university somewhere. And you're talking of um, uh, people not attending lectures. Uh, I mean, people receiving money <laughs> so that they get marks in a project. Some university lecturers have written projects where they simply dash uh, some universities in as alleged in some in areas. In you know? I feel the need to highlight some of those things that the president mentioned. Yes, he talks about uh, sex for grades that we know it's, it's an alarming stage, uh, sexual harassment. Uh, we, we see issues of uh, uh, payroll padding and ghost workers, lecturers taking up full-time appointments in more than uh, one academic uh, institutions, including private institutions, uh, lecturers writing seminar papers, project and dissertations for students for a fee, and also admission racketeering, to mention only uh, the most glaring corrupt practices. These are some of the things that mentioned by the president. Absolutely, because if, if you look at it, at what point will you say these are jam uh, students looking for university admission? They didn't get, but somewhere along the line, they got it. They are there a year or two, you now say, the third year, you now say, but these people... But Ben Shemang, would it be fair to, you know, yeah, these things happen in, in the tertiary institutions. But in the same tertiary institutions, we have lecturers who are doing their jobs legitimately without, you know, engaging in any form of, of these things highlighted. Well, uh, honestly... And those ones are perhaps members of ASO as well who are agitating for, you know, their rights. You see, when they say lecturers lecture in various places and you want to catch them, we've gone into these uh, bank verification numbers and you can always check inflows. If it is illegal, what do you do? And you can as well bring out the names of, uh, of these people engaged in this, in this kind of a thing so that, yes, we are talking of the fight against corruption. People will now get to see all of now, if. 
you refuse to work in government universities and you expect to be paid. It's also corruption. Now you are working in some private universities where you receive uh, money. It's also corruption. So it's a whole gamut you know, of corruption. Uh, you know, uh, you know uh, corruption. when I read the president's speech, what co came to my mind is an allegation that has been made against ASU for a while. ASU is always talking about invest, investment in universities and all of that. But people have also asked ASU that uh, ASU doesn't talk about the misappropriation of funds of maybe internally re uh, generated revenue within the universities. And you know, so the president said that this corrupt, uh, that yes, some people are talking about investment in the universities, but that the corruption in the universities is undermining the investment of government in the universities. Was the president, I mean, indirectly telling us that, okay, you're calling out to the government for not doing enough, but are you looking inwards to also, you know, take your colleagues to task? You see, this thing is so endemic. Corrupt, see, one finger that is already soiled with oil will always spread uh, uh, across other, uh, other fingers. Uh, in as much as I, um, I said I next, sorry, uh, ASU is calling, uh, is holding the, the federal government or state university administrators to ransom in terms of corruption. Of course, the same government is also uh, sending uh, the searching as a, the search light to sending the search light to university administrators. Uh, year in year out, money is being given. Sometimes you don't just see them, and there are uh, some of these um, uh, universities have. Um, uh, part-time courses uh, that are not controlled by the federal government. They generate quite a lot of, uh, of this money uh, here and there. It doesn't go to what, what is supposed to be the, the treasury of the, of the federal government. And that's why the, the Nigerian government, uh, the, where the president is also sending it uh, back, the heat back to, to, to us. Look, you are also uh, as corrupt as um, uh, any other agency you are uh, accusing. And um, this issue of... Um, uh, what you call um, uh, generating money internally, uh, uh, you can also go into, um, uh, you know, some universities abroad, uh, uh, kind of trying to ensure that there is a, uh, uh, do, I, do I call it, the independence of the, of the university itself. Uh, not necessarily always, always in, uh, uh, relying on, on government. What can the universities do if, for example, you want to go into oil prospecting, say University of Meduguri, you're going into oil prospecting. Uh, some are going into mining activities for some companies. You do surveys for those companies, generate right. money for the universities, and, and, and so be it. And right. if you say this is a teaching university, and you can also do some things for the university, why not so that uh, independence in terms of generating money and in being financially independent would also be better for the university system. All right, uh, let's take a look at other stories. Uh, still on the Daily Trust, we have the story here, petrol kills resurface in Abuja as marketers fault logistics. Again, again, like people will say. <laughs> and, um, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It has yeah. to be again. And, uh, now, two things, you see, usually you have a government depot. You also have private depot. And um, many of these oil tankers, they go to uh, buy this fuel from a private de depot. These people have increased their own uh, um, uh, charges. Uh, so uh, they, they, they are not finding those going to buy there. If you buy at the higher rate, how much will you sell here? Uh, when indeed you're talking of uh, this is the price you, you ought to, 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 be, to be selling your product. And uh, apart from that, the, 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 the tanker drivers and tanker owners, they also send the roads too, to some of these depots are, are, are very, very unmotorable. And therefore, I mean, sometimes when you have the product and there is a breakdown, it's not easy changing even the tire itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, just the, the, at the point they also give their own conditions. Please tire these roads, you know. And uh, sometimes Mo mo moving, moving the product. Ma exactly. There are there, so, there, uh, there are some who are raising um, uh, suspicion, or I would say attributing this to the recent flooding in uh, Kogi State, uh, Lokaja to be precise. Uh, certain roads are unmotorable; you cannot pass, 
And those are major roads linking the southern part of the country to the northern part of the country. Same in uh, uh, Benway, Makodi, mm -hmm. and all of that. Do you think that there's a correlation? Of there? course, there, there, it is. If you look at Murtala Bridge, Kotonkarifi, Jamata, before you enter Lokoja, see the hold up. At the point, I saw some people uh, texting that, look, there's vibration on the bridge mm. be because vehicles are supposed to ply on the road, on the bridge, not standing on the bridge. So chances are that because of way, uh, some of the pillars could be going, uh, I mean, down a, a bit. Uh, so yes, there's a correlation. If people cannot pass, there's no way tanker, uh, tank, uh, petrol uh, commodities will be, will be passing. Uh, it, 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 it's not uh, possible. And uh, of course, look at the motor of Lokoja, uh, Kogi State, Confluence State. I mean, the two major rivers joined there. And when you look at road networks, if you are coming to the north, you pass through Lokoja in some cases, except otherwise, you're going towards the Bida area, uh, you know. Uh, apart from that, you're going to Niger Delta, you're going to southeast, you're going to southwest. It is a confluence. And if you check during Easter, during many uh, festivities, that place is always, there's always a great look. Uh, Mr. Ben, so, one other reason this uh, marketers have given is the... Uh, public holiday, which was just for one day. And that reminded a lot of uh, people of when this happened and they said it was because of the Salah holidays. And they are expressing concerns that, you remember the Salah holidays, the queue now lasted for over a month and, you know, and they're expressing concerns that they hope this doesn't go that far. You see, uh, so how many holidays do we have? Just one day holiday. There are times they say, oh, because school, uh, pupils, have resumed in school. That's why we're having massive uh, movement. As if, uh, I mean, okay, our uh, pupils are just resuming now. I mean, Salah or uh, Christmas, people will just come and say, oh, because there is a uh, holiday. I mean, we've been seeing celebrations of this nature in various countries around the world. Why is our own case peculiar? And people seize the opportunity, whether they are religious festivals, to increase prices of virtually everything. So uh, uh, pump, uh, I mean, petrol or fuel generally is no exception at all. People want to cash in. Instead of seeing it as a religious thing, let's make some sacrifices to reduce. In uh, the developed world, once there is a, a festivity, especially religious festivity, they reduce prices. But in Nigeria, we go into hoarding. Uh, so we go into uh, racketeering of prices. People want to make a lot, a lot of money, which shouldn't be at all. All right, uh, let's take a look at our other stories. PDP versus Wike is also another story that is virtually on all the papers this morning. Uh, we are seeing that the meeting between the uh, Adolfo's Wabara led committee uh, with Wike yesterday ended in deadlock. And uh, we are wondering uh, what might have happened you know, from that meeting and all of that. The body language of uh, Governor Wike yesterday I saw a video where he wanted the meeting to be in the full glare of members of the press, where he was saying, and then the, the committee had to ask that the press should be left out of it uh, and all of that. So that gives, that, that gives a certain posture as to, it's like he has a position already, even before the meeting. He wasn't coming to you know, change his stand or anything of that sort. Yeah, you see, we can, in the romantic world where they say kiss and tell, there are things done administratively that are not yet in public glare, we can we'll just bring them. So maybe PDP was also f uh, fearing that the, the, the man would just a, a kind of um, uh, engage in some, um, some uh, utterances that would not be too good for, for PDP. In a, in a situation where um, elections are just around the corner. Remember when he said um, there was a bribe of uh, so, so, so billion uh, among party members, chairman is corrupt, and suddenly we saw that some people were refunding money. They said it was meant for accommodation and all that stuff. Uh, so 
if they fear that um, it, there was going to be more harm, of course, uh, it, it's, it's understandable that's the way they felt or they still feel they should manage uh, the crisis. After but the I meeting. think that, yes, but I think that um, if Wike is, uh, is truly uh, still a member of the PDP, he is um, overflogging the matter. People have followed him for too long, but at the point... But, I, but they followed him, but no one seemed to be doing, you know, uh, considering what his, his position is, with all the following and with all the negotiation. Yes, but you see, he should also be mindful if the majority is always begging, begging, well, begging. After at the, the point, meeting, some people can call the bluff. After the meeting yesterday, the chairman of the BOT, acting chairman, Adolfo Swabara, said they now have a better understanding of the issues. That's what he said. And that based on that, you saw the headlines that they are going to call an emergency meeting. Uh, it's, is it possible that uh, the end of the crisis is near? Well, according to them and according to the feelers we are getting from uh, Adolfo Nwabara, Senator. Um, but if you also juxtapose that with what, um, understandably, Nation is, is saying, they've painted a very bleak uh, picture when it comes to these negotiations between uh, uh, the, the PDP. But you will see that um, all the political parties are having this kind of a, uh, crisis uh, here and there. Uh, especially when you're looking at the campaign council of the two parties. None is accepting what has been uh, brought, uh, brought out. Uh, so everybody has an injury. So how do you take care of your injury is another thing. You, APC will live at its own uh, crisis and uh, attack PDP. APC, uh, PDP will live its own crisis and attack uh, APC. Uh, you know. Uh, In fact, the leadership of their crisis. The leadership uh, newspaper put it this way: It says 142 days to 2023 poll. Presidential candidates still struggling with intra-party issues. Absolutely, yes, mm -hmm. because um, uh, at the point. The national chairman of APC, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, would uh, write and thereafter said, no, I didn't write that. And uh, some people will feel, well, it's a leaked uh, memo where they accuse that the, the, uh, the candidate of the, of the party, APC, of uh, single-handedly writing and selecting, penciling down people who should be in the campaign. And, and the, the, the absence of the party chair, uh, no, not the party chair, the presidential candidate in the, at the inauguration of the uh, committee also s says a lot to this uh, effect. Uh, exactly. Also, when uh, uh, Adam Soshumole, who is also uh, the deputy director general of the campaign, at the point, I, 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 I think there was a flippancy or slip of the tongue there. Just said, I don't know where the, the presidential candidate is. I think that wasn't too good when it comes to utterances campaigns and, and, and the effect. I, I think it, it, it shouldn't be at all. Uh, so uh, in terms of watching out what people will say, anything you drop, especially when you are one of these stakeholders, it is having a boomeranging effect on the party, on the followership. It does uh, quite a, a, a lot uh, right. in that. All right, thank you so much. Uh, ben Sheman, Director of News Voice of Nigeria, we appreciate you. Thank you for sharing your perspectives with us on Daybreak My this pleasure. morning, uh, looking at our papers. Much. Yeah, we'll take a short breather now, and then when we return, the Daybreak continues. Please stay with us. When the situation where you find that they look like the not necessarily uh, tribal or regional.